Praise the Lord, viewers. Praise the Lord, brethren. Karibuni sana to today's Bible study. And thank you so much for continuing to be with us, to give us company and also be a part of the companionship of uh, Christ Jesus in as far as sharing the word of God and studying the word of God is concerned. My name is Pastor Nixon Elachi from here, Covenant Renewal Altar Ministry. Thank you for joining us, even for you who is joining us on internet, uh, maybe through Facebook or uh, Covenant Renew Alta YouTube channel. Karibu sana. Uh, let's pray before we start uh, today's Bible study. Father, in the name of Jesus, we honor you, Lord. We give you glory, praise, and adoration. Thank you because you've been good to us, Lord. You've kept us. We surrender to you, Jehovah God. We come to you repenting of every element of sin. We pray that, Jehovah, may you forgive us. Lord, even as we want to share of your bread, my Father, we pray that, Jehovah God, we may be sanctified and be cleansed through this word because your word sanctifies Jehovah God through its truth in the name of Jesus Christ. I pray for everyone who has joined us and everyone who will be joining us later, Lord, that my Father will be with them. The spirit of understanding shall be upon each and every one of us in the mighty name of Jesus. I pray for the grace of quickening. I pray for the grace of speaking forth your word in the name of Jesus Christ. Lord God, we thank you. We honor you. Be with us, my Father. In the name of Jesus, we have prayed. Amen and amen. So thank you so much for joining us today. We will be studying the book of, uh, uh, still the book of First Thessalonians. We have been going verse by verse. Uh, verse after verse uh, of the book of First Thessalonians. In the last session, we studied uh, chapter number four, verse number eleven, uh, verse number eleven to twelve. And today, by the grace of God, we trust God that we will study from verse number thirteen to verse number eighteen, uh, which will be the end of this chapter number four of First Thessalonians. And I will read <clears throat> the book of First Thessalonians, chapter number four beginning from verse number 13 to verse number 18. Brothers and sisters, we do not want you to be inf uninformed about those who sleep in death, so that you do not grieve like the rest of mankind who have no hope. For we believe that Jesus died and rose again, and so we believe that God will bring with Jesus those who have fallen asleep in him. According to the Lord's word, we tell you that we who are still alive, who are left until the coming of the Lord, will certainly not precede those who have fallen asleep. For the Lord himself will come down from heaven with a loud command, with the voice of the archangel, and with the trumpet call of God. And the dead in Christ will rise first, 
After that, we who are still alive and are left will be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air. And so we will be with the Lord forever. Therefore, encourage one another with these words. Paul has been talking to the Thessalonians throughout the first letter. And as uh, we saw just the way he opened up chapter number four and he says, uh, uh, finally, brothers and sisters, or finally, brethren, he has now transitioned. He's now uh, going ahead. And, and he has taken through the Thessalonians and the believers and the readers of this letter. He has taken them through the process of Christianity as a whole. This book might seem to be a small book, but if you see just right from chapter number one and now uh, uh, chapter number four, uh, Paul has gone systematically taking the Thessalonians, taking the readers of this letter uh, step by step, but, but uh, steadily taking them deeper and deeper into the things of the Lord, into Christianity, into the virtues and the beliefs and into uh, the, the reward that awaits a Christian, a, a Christians, not just uh, during uh, our life here on earth, but even after that. He talked, uh, remember, I'll, I'll may just uh, uh, repeat, uh, he talked about, uh, he talked about uh, him longing to see the Thessalonians, he talked about their faith and love, how their love expanded, how they had impacted others, uh, others in, in Macedonia and all, all, all the other parts, he talked to them of how they were a good example and they were emulating him as an example and he had lived among them as a good example. He talked to them about how he, want, he wanted to go and see them, but instead because the enemy had been blocking, Satan had been blocking his way, uh, uh, but God allowed uh, Paul to send Timothy, and Timothy went and he came back with a good report. And in this report, we learned that there are also some shortcomings that were there in that particular church. There were some gaps. And that's why Paul says that he was longing to go and see the Thessalonian church so that he may perfect uh, uh, the faith, uh, the, the, their faith, or rather he may complete the gaps that were there. This is uh, Paul. And now he has even come in chapter number four. He has talked or he's talking about how a Christian should live a life that pleases God because it's not just about pleasing fellow human beings but also pleasing God. And he has talked, uh, he, he dealt uh, on that matter uh, very, very well. And, and he went ahead and he reminded them about love uh, uh, and that this love is what could spread the gospel or what was uh, spreading the gospel. And as we saw in the session, in, last, in the last session, he, he was telling the Thessalonians or he's telling the readers of this word that make it your ambition, strive, ensure, strive and try to ensure that you lead a quiet life and that you mind your own business Business. That's in verse number 11, that you mind your own business and you also work hard, that you work with your hands, you work hard. You see, Paul was training the Thessalonians, training the believers, the Christians, on how to live here on earth also. Uh, uh, apart from being born again, that there is a responsibility. There is something that you are expected to do even as a Christian, as one who is a disciple of Jesus Christ. That you will not just say, that you will not just pray and everything happens. That there is a part that you need to play as a, uh, as a human being, as one who is still here in the world, as one who still needs also to feed physically, apart from feeding spiritually, and also to take uh, care of other people's needs that now you are, as you live a quiet life, as you lead a quiet life, as you mind your own business, you don't poke into other people's businesses uh, unnecessarily. And then now you, uh, he says that you also work with your own hands. You should be diligent. You should not be an idler. You should not be someone, and this we looked at it in the, in the last session, that you should not just be someone who will move up and down idling around, but you should be doing something, you should be committed to something, you should be fruitful with your hands. And he, he went ahead and he says that that's how you will earn respect in your daily life. That's in verse number 
12 of chapter number 4, 1 Thessalonians, uh, that uh, you will gain respect not just from the people within the church or not just from fellow believers, but or from outsiders and that you not depend on anybody. And we saw that people who depend on others are burdened and they make others to grumble, to be offended and even to fall into sin just because of that too much dependence on others instead of working out uh, uh, you, yourself. And so after this, Paul now is transitioning. He's showing them that after doing all this, after living very well here on earth, there is, there, there is something that is bound to happen in the life of a human being. There is something uh, that a human being has been destined to go through. And he's talking about this. Uh, uh, in this particular verse, or in this particular portion, it's not explained why Paul brought in the issue of death. But as you continue, you understand that he's bringing the issue of death because he's showing the Thessalonians, he's showing the believers, and uh, he's showing Christians today that you don't just live thinking that that's the end of it all. But there are ups and downs, and apart from those ups and downs, there is also something that is called death. That for a human being, there is a, the physical death that comes and happens at one time. And it seems that uh, this gap was there. There was no information about, uh, about this uh, because people uh, who had just received Christ Jesus, who had just been converted and they were seeing the power in the gospel, they could be tempted to think and say that because you have received Jesus Christ, because we are walking in the power, that because the God of Paul and the Jesus that Paul is preaching has touched our lives and we are seeing miracles and people are being healed, that it's not possible possible then for a Christian to die. And such a thinking could easily make people to, to become, uh, to, to be misguided, to, mi mi to be mistaught, to misinterpret the power or misunderstand uh, or misrepresent the power of God. And so uh, a very, a very critical thing in the body of Christ to show people that for sure, even as we are preaching the gospel, even as we are ministering, as the God of the miracles is working miracles, as the God of the resurrection, Jesus, the power of resurrection, is working out resurrection miracles, that remember that there are those among us, you, that will lose their lives, that will, will die among the believers, not just the sinners, not just the non-believers, but those that you are with them that are committed. And so when you see them, uh, uh, any one of them, yes, we do not pray for anyone to, 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 to die. We do not uh, pray uh, that anyone may, may, may go, but it is part of the channel. It is part of the, the procedure that God has put in place that among us uh, uh, believers, there are those uh, God will take in different times according to his own wish, he will harvest the way he wishes. And now that's why Paul introduces this and he says, brothers and sisters, we do not want you to be uninformed to, uh, about those who sleep in death so that you do not grieve like the rest of mankind who have no hope. Uh, there's a possibility that because uh, the, 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 the Thessalonians didn't know much about the passing on of fellow believers. Uh, they could wonder or, uh, or, or they could fail to, do, to know what to do or what to think of this God, of, of, of this powerful God. But then uh, Paul uh, tells them uh, 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 that uh, for sure there are those who will die, but them, the, them that are dying in Christ Jesus, them that are dying among us, you who are believers, they are not dying. Instead, they are sleeping. That's why uh, he says that we do not want you to be uninformed about those who sleep in death so that you, you do not grieve like the rest of mankind who have no hope. And now, uh, as Paul is talking about now death, he's now talking about sleeping in Jesus, sleeping, uh, 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 he means, uh, 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 he's transitioning these people to understand uh, now there is, uh, there is, after this death, after this sleeping, there is eternity, there is life eternal. Uh, in other words, he's now transitioning them from thinking just fellow believers, thinking just working hard, loving one another, praying, uh, and sharing the word of God, that apart from that, 
that we are focused somewhere, we are headed somewhere, and there it is possible that some will have to go the, through the channel of death for them to, 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 uh, to, to be resurrected later, or others, uh, Jesus Christ may come back before they test death, as the Bible says. So this is why Paul is now bringing this in, that he, is, he, he has intertwined, he has, he has enjoined a death and eternal life, uh, that, that for sure these things are, are bound to happen in our midst, even as a church, as believers, that, uh, uh, and he's giving direction on how to look at it so that we don't look at it as hopeless people. We don't look at it as people who have got no hope, who have got no future, who have got no fu uh, 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 vision. This is why he has started off and saying uh, about now that uh, people, uh, uh, that, that the brethren, uh, the believers, they, don't, they, they, they sleep in death. They don't just die, they sleep in death. And why does Paul take time first to talk about death and talking about grieving? It is uh, when, one, when, one, when one loses a loved one or when, when we lose uh, the loved ones, it is painful, it is devastating. It is not something to say that, uh, that, that, that just because you are a Christian, you will not feel it. It is dis devastating, it is painful, and it brings a lot of sorrow, it brings a lot of pain, it brings a, a gap. You know, when you look at things and you see there is a gap here, uh, and uh, how will we handle this? It brings, uh, it brings sometimes some kind of uh, despair, some hopelessness. Uh, but now this is what Paul is addressing. That yes, in as much as there will be a lot of pain, there will be a lot of devastation. Paul is not denying that there is grieving when one loses a loved one. Uh, whether close or what, but, but when one loses... But, but when one loses someone or when a group loses one of them or a family member loses one of them, whether they are born again or not, even if you are born again, it does not mean that people should not grieve. In fact, they should grieve. But then it's just giving a formula and giving hope and giving direction and showing that uh, uh, yes, uh, people are allowed to grieve. Yes, people are allowed to, to go through that pain because it is inevitable. Uh, yes, it is heavy. Uh, uh, but then what he is trying to address is that in, that in that grieving, in that pain, in that losing, in that difficult moment, in that painful moment, uh, that uh, because we have Christ Jesus, we have got some, we have hope, not some, but we have hope. This is the hope that Paul wants to show. So Paul does not want to show that uh, people do not die. He shows, he shows very clearly that people die, whether they are born again or not born again, they will die. But then that we should not grieve like the rest of mankind. Who are the rest of the mankind? The non-believers. The, the, them that might not have the information that what does this death entail or where is this ending, ending to? Where is this directing uh, to? And that's why Paul is explaining that uh, uh, very well. So the point uh, was grieving about death and he says yes it is allowed for one to grieve but uh, uh, that we should not grieve as uh, those who do not understand but before we go there remember uh, Paul now instead of saying just death he's talking about a sleep sleep in death that it is not just, uh, 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 remember we are talking about believers, we are talking about brethren, born again people who happen to die. Them, the, those ones, Paul is encouraging us and telling us that if uh, such a person happens to pass on, that person, who, uh, us who are remaining, we should grieve as we grieve. We understand that this, it's not the end of it all for this person, that in, this person is just asleep. This person is not dead. There is a voice that he responds to. Now when we say that there is a voice he responds to, we are not talking about 
uh, 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 oh, uh, because uh, my grandfather passed on and uh, yes, he's just asleep, he's not uh, dead, or oh, my great grandmother. Uh, so now the, 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 the devil might take uh, their form uh, or their body and begin coming with the dreams and terrorizing uh, somebody. And then you should say, hey, I should respect because you know he's just asleep. He's not dead. No, that's not the, the, the sleep that we are talking about. The sleep you are talking about is that uh, uh, this particular soul is, uh, is uh, still, uh, he will be ready for the coming of Jesus Christ, that this particular person uh, uh, he will, uh, will, be, will, be, uh, will still be listening and waiting uh, keenly for the voice of God uh, uh, during that uh, end time. And so uh, that's why even uh, it's not only Paul who used the word sleeping uh, uh, to, to mean death. Uh, Jesus Christ also talked about this. In, in Luke chapter number 8. And so the first thing to acknowledge is that uh, also believers die, but theirs is not just death, it is sleep. Hallelujah. And as we continue, we will understand why uh, the Bible calls it so. And it is Jesus Christ who talked about this in Luke chapter number 8, verse 51 and 52, when he had been called upon to go and, uh, and resurrect the daughter of Jairus. The Bible says, when he arrived at the house of Jairus, he did not let anyone go in, in, uh, in with him, except Peter, John, and James, and the child's father and mother. Meanwhile, all the people were wailing and mourning for her. Stop wailing, Jesus said. She's not dead, but asleep. Hallelujah. She's not dead, but asleep. Verse number 53 says, they laughed at him knowing that she was dead. So, the, and that's why we, uh, Paul is saying that, uh, that we, we should not mourn or we should not grieve as, uh, like those people who do not understand. Now, here... Jesus is clearly, Jesus, the power of resurrection, the honor of life, is telling the people that were mourning and wailing that this girl is not dead. She's just but asleep. They started laughing at him. Why? Because there are those people who will do things hopelessly because they do not understand the language of Jesus, the heavenly language. That in as much as this girl was not breathing, in as much as this girl had died, but the owner of life himself, Jesus Christ, the author of life and the finisher of life, the power of resurrection himself. He was saying that this girl, in as far as uh, the, the power of resurrection is concerned, this girl is not dead. She is just asleep. It means that this, this girl will be able to, to respond to the voice of life. Jesus Christ, the voice of life. This uh, girl will be able to respond to the power of life. In other words, Jesus Christ was telling them that the life of this girl is in my hands and I know that uh, I'm not letting uh, this life off. But then they laughed at him. This is why when we talk about that, she, uh, that, that person is just asleep and then others will wonder, others will die in laughter or in mockery. Why? Because they do not understand. But as believers, as Paul writes to the Thessalonians, we should be able to understand that as we lose that loved one, and that loved one, he or she was in Christ Jesus, that loved one is only but asleep. It is painful, it's, uh, it's, uh, it's uh, heavy grief, uh, but, but uh, that is how we should understand, especially if this person is born again, this person fears the Lord and has died in Christ, that is purely uh, sleep. And so these people laughed at Jesus Christ when he was telling them that uh, 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 the girl, the, the Jairus' daughter, was not dead, but she was just asleep as Paul says that this uh, them that die in Christ Jesus they are not they don't die but they, they are just asleep they just fall into sleep and and also the same same Jesus in John chapter number 11 where uh, uh, about uh, about uh, uh, resurrection of Lazarus 
The resurrection of Lazarus when Lazarus had died and uh, they, uh, they, 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 they had called Jesus Christ that your friend had died. Uh, Jesus Christ in John chapter number 11 verse 11 uh, said, these things he said, and uh, uh, these things he, uh, he said, and after that, that he said to them, "Our friend Lazarus sleeps, but I go that I may wake him up. Our friend Lazarus sleeps, but I go that I may wake him up." It's not that Jesus was not aware that Lazarus had died. He knew. In fact, if you read that. When he said these words, uh, the disciples, including Thomas, they thought that uh, uh, Lazarus had just, for sure he was just in the normal sleep. They did not understand. But in as far as Jesus Christ was concerned, knowing that Lazarus was his close friend, he knew that even if Lazarus has, has died, uh, he was just asleep. Why, uh, why was he very confident about this? It's because he, Jesus Christ is power over death. He has got power. He rules over death. And therefore he can command life to come back whenever he wishes. And so to him, death does not really uh, uh, make him uh, tremble. Uh, uh, at the name of Jesus, death instead trembles. And it's not the Jesus himself who trembles before death. And when he says that for sure uh, this person is just asleep, he means it. And also... Even them that are dying today, them that are falling asleep today in Christ Jesus, we know it is just a matter of time and they will also hear the voice of Jesus. Just like the daughter to Lazarus heard the voice of Jesus and she had to come back to life. She, was, she had to wake up from her sleep. She had to wake up from her slumber. And also uh, Lazarus, uh, though he had been in the grave, in the tomb for three days, but he had to come to hear the voice of Jesus and he had to resurrect. Uh, why? Because the voice of Jesus was, was, had more authority and had more power over death. And so uh, that's another point where we see that one who had uh, died, he was not just dead, he was asleep. Praise the Lord. And so, the believers who would die the natural death, they are not ruled. They are, they are not really ruled by. Uh, they are not ruled by death. They are not ruled by the power of death. In as much as they have uh, lost that breath, but they are not being ruled, or they are, they are, they are not uh, being uh, uh, domineered by the power of death, because they have Jesus and their soul had received Jesus Christ. They have got a special place. They are empowered even in their death. They are empowered. You remember? Uh, the, I, I love quoting this. Uh, with that when Elisha had died and there were and there, there, were, there was a battle between the Israelites and uh, uh, their enemies. Uh, but then when, when, someone, when someone was uh, had died and he was thrown in, uh, in a particular valley where the body of El Elisha had been buried, immediately that body touched the, 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 the bones of Elisha. That, 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 that person resurrected. The, the people resurrected whoever uh, that touched the bones of this dead man, Elisha. And so even in death, uh, Elisha was, was still, uh, he was just asleep. He was not dead. He was, not, he was just asleep. Now this confirms this. And so uh, remember that it is only those who die in Christ Jesus that we say they are asleep. Otherwise, those that do not die in Christ Jesus, they are not asleep. They are dead. Why? Because they are awaiting also the eternal death. There is no resurrection. There is eternal death. There is eternal damnation. There is eternal pain. So there is nothing that they look towards to. There is nothing they hope to. This is why it is important, brother and sister, uh, whoever is 
is watching, whoever is listening, it's good that when your time comes, you have to die. Make sure that you are dying in Christ Jesus. And because you don't know the hour, you don't know the minute, it's good to always prepare your heart, to always be prepared. So whenever our Father calls you home, you go knowing that you are going in the bosom, uh, in, uh, in, the, in the right hand uh, of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Uh, and so, as I've said, that them that sleep in Christ Jesus, they die in Christ Jesus, they, 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 uh, the power of death is not o- o- over them. That's why uh, Paul, in 1 Corinthians chapter number 15, verse 55, Paul mocked death and he asked, Oh, death, where is your sting? Oh, death, where is your sting? That hata kama umetuchukulia mpendo wetu, lakini tunajua huyo mpendo hata kama umechukua mshirika hata kama umechukua mtu aliyeokoka hatuombi yeyote aende lakini hata kama ameenda na ameenda tunajua tuna uhakika ya kwamba ana msimamo mzuri na Yesu Kristo hatutalia kwa uchungu kwamba ameacha pengo lakini hatutasononeka tukosa tumaini kwa sababu tunalo tumaini ya kwamba hajafa yualala tu kwa nini kwa sababu a, yeye anatawala juu ya mauti maana a, 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 wakati alikuwa hai alikuwa na yule aliye juu ya mauti ambaye ni Yesu Kristo and so that's why uh, unlike the death of a uh, 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 unlike the death of a wicked person unlike the death of a sinner the death of a saint is precious before the Lord, uh, according to Psalms 116, verse number 15. But the death of a wicked uh, person, the death of a sinner, God hates that death because that is now the true death. Eh, mutu ambaye amekufa kama hayuko katika njia sawa na Mungu huyo ni kufa amekufa hajalala na Mungu anachukia hicho kifo na ndio hata mwenyewe anasema Mungu mwenyewe anasema katika kitabu cha Ezekiel akamwambia Ezekiel katika kitabu cha Ezekiel 33 uh, verse 10 and 11 that therefore you O son of man say to the house of Israel thus you say if our transgressions and our sins lie upon us and we pine away in them, how can we then live? Say to them, as I live, says, uh, uh, says the Lord God, I have no pleasure in the death of the wicked, but that the wicked turn from his way and live. Turn, turn from your evil ways, for why should you die? O house of Israel. God is not pleased in the death of a wicked, in the death of a sinner. He does not take pleasure. He hates it. He hates it. But for the death of a saint, it is precious in his sight. He counts it a big benefit. No wonder Paul says, for me, uh, to live is Christ, to, 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 die, uh, to die is gain. Uh, you remember uh, that. And so uh, this, this gives you hope that uh, 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 one who dies in the Lord, one who sleeps in the Lord, that one, uh, God values that person. God uh, knows that that person is only but asleep. Verse number 14 uh, of that chapter number Four, uh, First Thessalonians, let's continue. The Bible says, For we believe that Jesus died and rose again, and so we believe that God will bring with Jesus those who have fallen asleep in him. As I said, that, you know, when one dies, when one uh, goes to be with the Lord, and that's why we say that he has gone to be with the Lord, uh, he's, he's just asleep. And these people who have just fallen asleep, in him, that God, uh, through his son, Jesus Christ, he will bring them uh, together with the son, uh, Jesus Christ. So what gives us hope? What gives us more hope? The, what gives us more hope is the faith and the belief that Jesus died and rose again, and he, will, uh, and he resurrected, uh, and, and he will also resurrect those that have slept in him, them that have died in him, the beloved one that has died in Christ Jesus. He, they will be resurrected just the way Jesus Christ died and he resurrected. That is how also 
uh, them that die in Christ Jesus, they will be resurrected. So it is not the end of it. Uh, uh, we, uh, it should not be some, uh, it should be, it should not be a source of hopelessness. Rather, it should be uh, uh, the, uh, our hope and our belief in Christ Jesus. That if Jesus Christ himself, he died and he resurrected, uh, uh, and, and yet he is alive today, uh, why not? Uh, what reason does he have to, to not to tell us the truth? Not to tell us that, oh, the, the one that has died and he has died in me, I'm unable to resurrect that person. Jesus Christ himself resurrected from death. And therefore he is able to resurrect every do dead, dead soul. And especially uh, even uh, during his second coming. This message, this belief, this faith, that Jesus Christ died and he resurrected. That is the centrality of the gospel of Jesus Christ. That is how the, 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 the gospel of Jesus Christ is sustained. How? Because we are preaching one who overcame death. Praise the Lord. We have him who overcame death. And he has promised that he will come back. And when he comes back, even them that have died, they will be resurrected. Even them that are under, even them that were lost in the seas, wale walikufia baharini, wale walikufia angani, hata wacha ni kwamie. Iwapo tuseme kwa mfano, Osama bin Laden wakati alipelekwa kadzikwa kwenye bahari huko chini kabisa tuseme kwa njia moja ama nyingine awe alifika mahali akafa katika Kristo Yesu hata yeye pia atasikia sauti ya ufufuo atasikia sauti ya Bwana ya Bwana Yesu the power of resurrection kula ambako wako atafufuliwa yeyote yule waliozikwa chini kule katika visima katika migodi wao wote tunatumaini kokota ambako walipotelea hata wale ambao walipotelea katika majivu walichomeka tu na wakafa lakini walikufa hivyo katika Kristo Yesu tunalo tumaini na tunajua ya kwamba Yesu aliyena uwezo atafufua hao wote kwa hivyo usivunjike moyo mpendwa usipoteze tumaini mpendwa kwa sababu yule mpendwa wako aliaga na aliaga katika Kristo Yesu huyo bado kuna tumaini la kukutana na yeye tena haleluya Yes, this is the hope we have. And this is the hope that is saving humanity. This is the hope. This is the centrality of the message of the gospel. This is the centrality. This is the key to the gospel. Why do I say this? That, that, that Jesus Christ, the death of Jesus Christ, by knowing and believing and hoping and understanding that Jesus Christ died and he resurrected and is alive today, that that is the message that brings life to the gospel. If you want to understand, then look at Romans chapter number 10, verse number 9. <clears throat> Romans chapter number 10, verse number 9, uh, Paul uh, writes that if you confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in your heart, that God has raised him from the dead, you will be saved. Hallelujah. That you will be saved. So you will not only be saved today, hauta ukoka tu leo peke yake, lakini pia hata ukifwa ndani ya Yesu. Yeyota mbame kufwa ndani ya Yesu, pia hata okolewa kutoka kwa mauti. Na ndiyo umana tunasema, Paula nasema ya kwamba, hawajafa wale walio mamini. Walio jua kwamba Yesu Krista alikufa na kafufuka. Na yuhaya meketi kwenye mkono wakuume wa mungu baba. Hawa hawajafa, wawo wamelala tu. Na wakati mtimilifu kifika, Yesu na sauti yake enye uhai ikitokea. Kwenye mawingu bila shaka watainuliwa wataamuka mara tena haleluya watasikia hiyo sauti kama vile Lazaro alivyosikia sauti ya huyu mwenye 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 wokovu na mwenye uhai huyu the power of resurrection huyu kama vile yule binti wa Jairo alivyosikia hiyo sauti ana Yesu Kristo mwenyewe akasema ya kwamba hajafa amelala tu akasema Lazaro baada ya kufa amezikwa siku tatu amefungwa kwenye sanda lakini Yesu Kristo akasema 
huyo hajafa amelala tu kumaanisha kwamba atasikia sauti iwapo mtu analala hata katika usingizi waleo hii wa kawaida mtu akilala ukimuita itafika mahali lazima ataitika atasikia sauti na ndio maana Paulo anasema kwamba waliokufa katika Kristo hawajafa wamelala ni kwa nini watakapoitwa wakisikia sauti ya parapanda wakisikia sauti ya mwenye uhai wakisikia sauti ya Yesu aliyeshinda mauti alienda ni mwetu basi wataitika hiyo sauti haleluya wataitika hiyo sauti na nina nena siku ya leo ya kwamba hata uwewe ambaye uko na jambo ambalo limo katika maisha yako lakini linakaa kama pia limekufa na sio tu kumpeteza mpendo wa peke yake lakini unakaa unaona hilo jambo limekufa na hilo jambo likasikia sauti ya mwenye uhai Yesu Kristo lirudi katika uhai katika jina kula Yesu Kristo Hallelujah So whoever believes and confesses that Jesus Christ died and he resurrected and is alive he will be saved Na mtu kama huyo hafi ni kulala analala Hallelujah So that is the hope we have as Christians And so this is the hope that makes Christians distinct this is the hope that makes Christians to be unique a chosen generation because they carry one who carries life they carry one who ha- who is hope the hope of life Jesus Christ the hope of life And verse number 15 Paul continues to say according to the Lord's word we tell you that we who are still alive who are left until the coming of the Lord will certainly not precede those who have fallen asleep as i said as i, I was starting off that Paul has transitioned from talking about the things of this world uh, from talking about now how to live with one another how to love how to work hard how and all those things which are very important and critical uh, as pillars of a good christian but then he has transitioned and is showing them now he has talked about death and is connecting it showing that it is not just about death but it's a channel to go into the next glory to go into the next level and we have seen him and telling us that we should know that them that die in our midst they do not just die but they are sleeping they are asleep and they will resurrect and and now he's explaining when will they resurrect at what time will they resurrect what will make them resurrect how will we meet again ndio maana unasikia kwamba tutaonana tena tutakutana tena lakini haya ni katika wale wateule wale ambao wamemkubali Yesu Kristo wamekufa katika Kristo peke yao wao ndio watakutana sio kila mtu mtakutana wakati ambapo wakati wa mwisho ukifika sio kila mtu kwa hivyo ni vizuri wapo ungelipenda kukutana na mpendo wako. Mungu asaidie kwamba huyo mpendo wako awe ameenda uh, mahali ambapo uh, uh, ni pa, uh, paradiso. Na pia wewe ufe u, wakati utakufa uh, ufe ama Yesu akirudi uende paradiso. Hapo ndipo mtakutania mara tena. Hilo ndilo tumaini leto. Kwa hivyo Paulo akaendelea kuelezea. He continue to explain now about that particular day how will will we meet again and so he says that them that are dead them that are asleep in Christ Jesus they will uh, we will not we will not uh, 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 arise before them instead they are the ones wao ndio watakuwa na na advantage kwamba watainuka wata kwanza kabla ya wale ambao wako hai wakati huo kama ni kesho ama kama ni leo ya kwamba wale ambao walikufa wale ambao wa, walikufa walilala wakiwa katika Kristo katika uh, wherever they are hata kama walikufia kwenye bomb blast hata kama walikufia wapi walizikwa wapi ama hawakuzikwa walipotea tu waliteketea hao wote ya kwamba watainuka a uh, kabla yetu that's what Paul is saying in verse number 15 that according to the Lord's word we tell you that 
we who are still alive, who are left until the coming of the Lord, will certainly not precede those who have fallen asleep. So those who have fallen asleep will go, will, will arise, or will resurrect before, before that. Then now uh, uh, we go to, to the next. And, and, and remember, Paul has said, according to the Lord's word. This is the word of Jesus Christ. Remember, Jesus Christ had talked uh, about the, the, these end times. He had talked about it uh, in chapter number 24 of Matthew. Matthew chapter number 24, uh, the story between verse number 29 to 41. He had talked about it. He had talked uh, uh, about how things will turn out to be, that the sun will be darkened, the moon will no longer give its light. Uh, uh, and he, he gave a, a, a very good description there. And, and, and that uh, uh, he, will, uh, he will gather saints from every corner. So when Paul talks about this, he's referring to the words of Jesus Christ. So Paul is not talking about this issue out of imagination. No, he's, in, he's not just talking uh, uh, out of fiction. No, he's talking, he's actually quoting the words of Jesus Christ, how Jesus Christ explained the end times uh, himself. And, and as we have said, uh, that uh, Paul informs the Thessalonians and he informs the readers of this word and the listeners as we listen, that for sure the dead are the ones that will be the first one to arise so that we may uh, catch up together uh, with Jesus Christ in the air. Uh, let me read... Uh, Uh, in that, uh, uh, verse number 16, let me read verse number 16. I'll join 16, 17, 18 because there's something I want to tie together there. 16, 17, and 18. For the Lord himself will come down from heaven with a loud command, with the voice of the archangel, and with the trumpet call of God. And the dead in Christ will rise first. After that, we who are still alive and are left will, will be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air. And so we will be with the Lord forever. Therefore, encourage one another with these words. So Apostle Paul goes ahead to describe how events will unfold on that particular day. Uh, as, as Jesus Christ comes and he gives a very good description of how and he just also quotes the way Jesus talked about it Matthew, in Matthew chapter number 24 uh, that, that, that there shall be a loud voice of command and, and this voice of command uh, shall be done by an archangel. So the archangels will be on duty that day and they will give a large voice of command, of course, under the authority of the Son of God, under the authority of God himself, because Jesus will be coming back as a king. And it is through that loud uh, voice, that command, that now even the dead, they are asleep will hear that voice, the voice I've been talking about. They will hear that voice and they will rise up uh, 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 so that we, we be caught up together in, uh, in the skies uh, because now the Son of Man will have come back for his saints, for his chosen ones, uh, for the holy ones, for his uh, bride. And so uh, it will be interesting this day uh, because this voice will draw the attention of everything, whether alive or dead. It will attract the attention of everything. But then the very interesting thing is that the dead will be the first to be taken up, uh, to, to arise and to be taken up. Uh, the, and the, especially them who slept in Christ Jesus. Uh, they will be the first ones. They will have the, that advantage. 
And now it is at that juncture that now our bodies will be glorified. We will no longer have these bodies of flesh and blood. We will no longer have bodies that are, are feel pain. We will no longer have bodies that are susceptible to sin. We'll, the, our bodies will be glorified to being ready to kitayarishwa sasa kwa ajili ya kwenda kutawala pamoja na Yesu Kristo. Kwa kwenda kukua na Yesu Kristo. Ah, hivyo ndivyo mambo haya yatakuwa. Mili yetu itakuwa transformed. Na wakati hiyo ndio maana mili hii itageuzwa kwa kiwango kwamba haita the, the, our bodies will defy the gravity. Praise the Lord. Our bodies will defy gravity. That's why uh, we will be caught up in the air because the Bible says we will be caught up in the skies together with the son of God, together with the king of kings because our bodies will have uh, 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 transformed. Remember, Jesus Christ, when he died, when he arose, he did not arise with the same same characteristics of the of his body. That's why why he could appear to the disciples and they could feel there is fire burning. And that's why even after I, he was more glorified, and even Peter would say, "Hey, I'll not touch you. Get get away from me." And this is the same Jesus that had been walking together with because uh, after death now the, his body had been glorified. That is how even them that will be asleep, them that were, were, were murdered to death, them that were maimed to death, them that were tortured to death, they will have transformed bodies, bodies that are, are no longer susceptible to sin, bodies that are no longer sensitive to pain, but Bodies that are heavenly, bodies that can be, uh, that are light, are spiritually light enough to be caught up in the air. Bodies that will not be burdened by sins. Because, uh, because, Wakati Yesu Kristo atakuwa kwenye mawingu basi tutafanyika wepesi kwa ile sauti kuu ya tarumpeta kutoka kwa malaika mkuu uh, chini ya amri ya Bwana Mungu mtawala Bwana Yesu asifiwe haya ni mambo ambayo huwa hayajadiliwi sana lakini ndio ukweli ambao tunafaa kuelewa na ndio ukisikia Paulo akisema kwamba hata tunapoomboleza tusiomboleze kana kwamba hatuelewi ama kama watu wasioelewa ama walio hawana tumaini tujue kwamba kuna mambo mazuri zaidi atakayotokea eh ukiafikiria okay, haya mambo unayaona kama sinema lakini ni mambo mazuri mambo matamu mambo ya kupeana tumaini ili kuingia katika ufalme wa Mungu katika utakatifu wa Mungu na hapo ndipo kwa sababu tutakuwa na new bodies bodies that are glorified then we will be in victory so with this understanding with the understanding that we will no longer have uh, these corruptible bodies, we will no longer feel this kind of pain that will no longer be susceptible to sin. That's why Paul, now uh, uh, in the verse that we talked about, but I'll read now a bigger part so that we may understand. Uh, Paul said in First Corinthians chapter number 15, uh, from verse number 50, uh, he said, Now this I say, brethren, that flesh and blood cannot inherit the kingdom of God. Unasikia sasa mili yetu itakuwa imebadilishwa. Mili ya wateule itakuwa imebadilishwa. Whether ni mtu alikuwa mekufa ama alikuwa hai, lakini alikuwa ndani ya Yesu Christo, mili wake utageuzwa. Ya kwamba, that flesh and blood cannot inherit the kingdom of God, nor does corruption inherit in corruption. Behold, I, to, I tell you a mystery. We shall not all sleep, but we shall all be changed. Sisi water tabadlishwa. We shall all be changed. In a moment, in the tingling of an eye, at the last trumpet, for the trumpet will sound, and the dead will be raised incorruptible, and we shall be changed. For this corruptible must put on incorruption, and this mortal must put on immortality. So when this corruptible has put on incorruption, and this mortal has put on immortality, then shall be brought to pass the saying that is written, Death 
is swallowed up in victory. O oh, death, where is your sting? O oh, heads, where is your victory? The sting of death is, is sin, and the strength of sin is the law. But thanks be to God who gives us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. So with this knowledge, with this knowledge of victory, with this knowledge of understanding, we should encourage one another. This is what Paul is saying, especially in times of death and suffering. Uh, because there is an end to this physical death, uh, uh, but on condition that we remain in Jesus, that even them that are uh, dying, them that are sleeping, when they sleep, in Christ Jesus, we know that it is not the end of it. We know that there is somewhere that we are heading to. And we know that these people that we have lost, the loved ones that we have lost, and they are in Christ Jesus, that we should remain in this Christ Jesus so that we will be able to be together in the mansions that Jesus Christ has been preparing. Hallelujah. We shall be together. So we should not, uh, we should not lose hope. Do not be hopeless because Jesus is our hope. Do not uh, be, uh, give up. Do not see that uh, uh, it is not possible or, or, or maybe that Christians should not die. No. Uh, remember as we have said according to Psalms 116 verse 15 is that precious is the death of a saint in the sight of the Lord. But as, as Ezekiel 33 uh, as God has, has clearly uh, said verse 10 and 11 that God is not pleased with the death of a wicked. So the challenge we have is to ensure that the wickedness in people uh, is, is reducing. How? By preaching the love of Christ, by spreading the gospel, by speaking the message and helping them believe in the message of salvation, in the pillar of salvation, that Jesus Christ died and he arose and today is alive. Through that, they will receive salvation. And therefore, they will have hope. And without this Jesus Christ, without this salvation, there is no hope because there is death after death and not life after death. But with Jesus Christ in us and with us believing that Jesus Christ died and arose and is alive, seated at the right hand side of the Father and that is coming back and is coming back for us and allowing ourselves to live according to what he desires, to what pleases him, then Jesus Christ will enable us to overcome death. Just as he overcome death, we will be in a position to ask death, where is your sting? Where is your victory? Why? Because we have got life himself. We shall not fear death because death uh, is low and low is not above us if we are in Christ Jesus because when we are in Christ Jesus seated at the right hand side of the Father we are of the heavenly and if we are of the heavenly we are above death we are above the pains of this world yes there will be pains yes there will be grief yes there will be mourning there will be wailing but let's do it with understanding and this understanding can only be enhanced by the power of the Holy Spirit by the word of God by God himself because this is where we walk in victory and we will be able even to mock death and ask all oh, death where is your sting hallelujah thank you for listening to the bible study this evening i believe that you have been blessed. I believe that God is continuing to transform you as we continue preparing ourselves for the coming of Jesus Christ for that last day so that we may be caught up in the air together with him. No one knows the hour nor uh, the day. Uh, let us always be focused on Jesus and accept him. So if you have not accepted Jesus Christ as your personal savior, you 
have not confessed him, you have not believed him, as Romans 10, 9 says, then know that you cannot be able to be saved, you cannot be able to be born again. So for you to be born again, you need to accept Jesus Christ, confess him with your mouth, and believe in your heart that he died and he resurrected. And it is through that that you'll be able to have power over death. So repeat this prayer after me. Uh, if you'd like to be born again, say, Lord Jesus, I come before you. I repent of my sins. Oh Lord, forgive me. Remove my name from the book of death and write it in the book of life. Today, Jesus, I want to be with you. I reject the works of Satan in the name of Jesus. Fill me with the Holy Spirit so that I may walk in holiness. In Jesus' name I'm born again. Amen, amen. Let me pray. Father, in the name of Jesus, thank you, Lord, because of uh, this brother, this sister, who has just confessed you and who has just believed. I pray for them. May you keep them, Lord. Keep us, Jehovah. We pray for the, guests, the grace to be kept, to be, uh, to be sustained in the name of Jesus. Many are the challenges, many are the hiccups that make us, my Father, to stumble and fall. Jehovah, we repent in the name of Jesus. May you enable us because yourself, you are in this world and you overcame this world. We pray for the grace to overcome. In the name of Jesus, we pray for your strength. We pray for your anointing in Jesus' mighty name. Thank you, Lord. Let this word transform us fully in the name of Jesus. I pray even for them that have lost their loved ones. My God, remember them. I pray that, Lord, you may reactivate this hope in their lives in the name of Jesus. Because, my Father, when we lose our loved ones, we get to a point and we are hopeless. But you have uh, uh, warned us uh, through the Paul that we should not not grieve as people who do not understand. Lord, even as they grieve, Lord, I pray that you may give them peace, you may give them calmness, you may give them comfort in the name of Jesus Christ. Strengthen them, Jehovah God. Father, I pray that through this, my Father, it may not bring distraction because when we grieve without, uh, without knowledge, then we, we get tempted to be destroyed. Father, there are others who have even thought of committing suicide why? Because their loved ones have gone. How I pray that you may give them calmness, that you may give them peace and comfort. You may give them strength to overcome during these difficult moments in the name of Jesus. Fill them with your knowledge, your word, your understanding, your spirit and stick closer to them. Your friend that sticks closer than a, a brother in the name of Jesus Christ. Father, heal their hearts, my father, them that have lost their loved ones and they're watching now. Heal their hearts, heal their their families, heal the children that have lost their parents, heal the parents that have lost their children my God, I pray that you may remember them in the mighty name of Jesus, Father protect them Jehovah God from anything that is destructive in the name of Jesus bring them closer to you Jehovah God, let your nursing, your comfort, your peace you've taught us that my Father you nurse your people just as a nursing mother, Father God let this be the opportunity in the name of Jesus. We bless you, Jehovah God. We give you glory. Forgive us, my Father, in places where we have over overdone it my father lord against your will we have committed sin through our grief lord we repent in the name of jesus we pray for your strength i pray for every listener for everyone who is watching i pray for your special grace for your special anointing the grace of comforting and consoling others in the name of jesus christ oh the grace of healing in the name of jesus the grace of preaching the, the risen christ in the name of jesus we bless your holy name we thank you jesus be with us, my Father, and continue glorifying yourself through us. We love you and honor you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen. Thank you so much. God bless you for taking part. 
God bless you for being with us. Oh, you are a blessing. Having you around here and having you online uh, through our Facebook page, Covenant Renew Altar Ministries, and our YouTube channel, uh, Covenant Renew Altar. We are so much blessed. And even also continue watching us on Science TV and uh, also on Tumaini TV in Nakuru. God bless you so much. We love you. And we, we request you that on Sundays continue joining us on those uh, online channels and also you can join us at Kasarani on uh, uh, at Santon just off Kasarani Miki Road on Santon Police Road 4th Street you will meet us there Covenant Renew Altar Ministry on Sundays we are there on Tuesdays we are praying from 6 and on Wednesdays we are having prayer fellowship God bless you so much and from Covenant Renew Altar Ministry we say thank you and have a peaceful evening. Shalom. Amen. Nina posoma neno lako Baba nina omba ukaya funguwe macho yangu Uka ni ungoze katika ukweli wako Baba, na kulipa moyo wa kuku wa kuku Nina posoma, neno lako Baba, nina omba, ukaya funguwe macho yangu